Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting and in this video we're going to walk you through how to use our sales dashboard tool inside of Business Central. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing you're going to need to do after you've downloaded our app from AppSource is come up to the search and just type in SDB. We will uh, then see a few options here. We want to start with that setup to make sure that your demo key is activated. So first thing you're going to do is come up here and click generate demo key. That is going to give you a demo key down here that you can see and a key expiration date as well. Should give you 60 days to test out and play with for free. After which, if you would like to continue using the app, reach out to us and we can provide an activation key that's good for either one, two, or three years, depending on what you choose. Once that's provided, you'll come up here and click enter activation key, enter the key, and then you should be good for the duration that you've purchased. So again, once it's expired, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to provide that to you. As you can see here, the setup then from there is actually pretty light, right? We only have a few things that we need to fill out, then the dashboard will be working great for you. So first thing here you can see is data source sales by customer. You can just choose here whether you want that uh, sales data to go off your sales invoices, your customer ledger entries, or your general ledger entries. Again, just depends on uh, what windows and screens and tables you're mainly using. Some people are using more sales journals versus sales orders and sales invoices. So again, just depends on where a majority of your sales data lives. Uh, after that, we've got exclusions both from uh, GL account from sales and exclusions from resources from sales. So again, if there's anything you want to exclude from these dashboards, you can do so there. Then the last one here is this geo view. So I've got it set to combined right now. You can also set it to be separate. You can set it to see the world view only or the US view only. So again, this is the first uh, metric and uh, graph I'll show uh, here next, but you can either combine those, see just the world view or see just the US view. Um, so last thing here is gonna be the user setup. You just wanna make sure that all the users who are going to be accessing the sales dashboard are set up here. You see that I've got myself here um, just with a few other things so you can set uh, the dashboard view uh, that you want to default into. If you want to start the timer similar to our financial dashboard where it will cycle through uh, both different dashboards as well as do different refresh rates which would you'd be setting right here. Uh, the dashboard date range you just set the default range that you want to see upon logging in cycle view if you enable that it will cycle through the different tabs as i've just mentioned and then these different uh, dimension by dimension rows and columns we'll get into that but this would just default what you want on the x and y axis when we go into our uh, dimensional analysis so again just make sure the users are set up there so that they can access the sales dashboard and then you are good to go so let's go back up to the search and type in sdb and we'll go right into the sales dashboard. So once we get in here, it is going to open up the default. As I mentioned, um, the first thing that we're gonna see here is the US and the world sales. So again, remember I had that view as combined. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to see the US and the world view side by side. So again, you can see pretty much all the sales here are in the United States. So in this case, I may want to only enable the US map since the world map doesn't mean uh, as much in this demo instance, right? So that would be the different toggle. You can enable what you wanna see, or you can view them separately, in which case there'd be two tabs up here, one for US and one for world. So let's jump into this metric. Uh, as you can see, there's four different things here, two data grids on the top, which is gonna give you the actual detail that you're looking at in the map. And then you've got this bubble map down here. So again, kind of just showing small, medium, large bubbles, depending on the volume in that state. This is just a quick view you can look at to see in general, how much volume you're doing per state. You can see up in the Midwest and up in the Northeast uh, doing more sales than you know out West and uh, in the Northwest over here. So again, just some good things you can look at. If you go into any of these and click on them, it will show you what's that, uh, what makes that up. Again, if you're in this grid up top here, uh, maybe you wanna see what you did uh, in Oregon, for example, you could click on that and it'll show you exactly the invoices that make up that balance. Same thing over here on the world view. Uh, of course, it's just aggregating everything here. And then if you wanted to break it out by different date ranges, you could come in here and do last 30 days, for example, to see what you've sold in the last 30. Uh, maybe you wanted to do the last three months. Just gonna give you filters based on the range that you pick. So that's a little bit about the Geo Sales dashboard. Uh, let's go into this by date tab. Uh, definitely one of the most popular, I would say, here. So you can see quickly how much sales data you've had today, how much sales you've done this week, month, and year. Uh, again, if you click into any of these, it'll show you exactly what makes up those sales. 
Down here, we've got some charts and grids so you can see sales by date. Again, uh, I could go last 30 days and it's gonna update that grid. I could go last three months. It's gonna update the grid to the last three months for this chart. Uh, over here, we've got year to date sales uh, by year. So it's gonna show you the last six years. Um, so you can see all that data. Again, if I click into any of this, it's gonna show me everything that makes up that balance. And then down here, we've got a month by month. So this is gonna show current year. You can see here 2023, uh, you know, January, February, obviously we're not into March yet. Uh, if you click into any of these again, it is gonna show you all the data that makes up that balance uh, for this month. So few different grids there we can look at on the buy date. Let's jump over to the buy item. In this case, we've got two different grids. So the first one is gonna be uh, customer by item category sales. So here you can see all the different customers and the different uh, uh, item categories across here. So I've got finance as a service, licensing, professional service, and then it'll show you the totals. So you can kind of just quickly scroll through here to see who's doing what. And then down here as well, you've got just a high level item category grid, uh, not specific to any customers in this case, uh, but you can see, let's go to the last 30 days, for example. <clears throat> We can scroll over here and just see, okay, day by day, how much sales did I do in each category? If you did something like last three months, for example, it's going to give you more of a, a range per week. So depending on the date range that you have, it's going to split up those dates uh, in a different manner as well. Let's jump over to the dimensions now. So this is what we talked about during the setup where you can set up the grid. So it's X axis by Y axis right here. You can see my dimension by dimension sales. Uh, down the y-axis here, I've got my different product codes, which is a dimension that I actually use from another tool uh, called Auto Create Dimensions that we have. Uh, all of those dimensions are being auto created. And then I've got it split out up here by salesperson. So depending on who sold what, uh, we can see totals to see you know who in the organization is selling what type of products. You can see that quick grid and you can even open it in Excel if you'd like. Then down here, we've got a few different sales uh, metrics and graphs. We've got a sales by customer and a sales by product. So again, you can see trends by who's buying what and um, who's buying uh, what products specifically or what products are being sold. Then finally down here, we've got a sales by dimension. So you would pick uh, what dimension that you wanna display. Then you can see the trends over time. So again, I've got my product selected as my dimension here down this uh, Y axis. And then across the top here, we've just got, again, date ranges that we're gonna use to see, okay, how are certain products trending by certain date ranges? Got a few more here. Uh, salesperson, definitely another popular one here. So you can see by salesperson who's doing, you know, what type of sales throughout time. Again, all of this you can toggle between all the different date ranges we have up here. If we wanted to see who's selling what in the last 30 days, this is going to give us uh, more of a, you know, granular breakout by week. If we come here down to sales by salesperson by date, uh, again, it's going to show a trend. Let's refresh this real quick and pick a different date range take a look at the last three months. There we go a little bit better. Uh, you can see different salespeople selling different things, you know, trends up, down, got dollar amounts over here uh, on the left-hand side, and then just trending by the last three months. And you've got different uh, lines for each salesperson here. And then over here, we've got more of a bar chart that shows who's selling what. Um, obviously a little uh, skewed here in my demo instance uh, as I tag myself more often than not. But again, you can tag um, different folks and then coming in here, you can see all the detail of what invoices they've been tagged on or what orders they've been tagged on. Two more, we've got a by customer over here. So again, you can see sales by customer uh, over a period of time. You can also see sales by customer and invoice. Uh, down here, it's just gonna show mostly a detailed view of all of the invoices that have been created and posted during the time frame you've selected. So again, if I did something like today, uh, probably only going to have uh, a few results here. As you can see, I've got one result of something that was posted today. However, if I go to the last three months, there's going to be much more data in that grid. The final one that we want to share today is going to be this back order uh, tab of the dashboard. This is simply going to show you two different things. The first one is going to be back orders by customer. So this is going to show all the different orders by customer what item is on that order that's back ordered currently. So you can see here that we've got 
two different orders for two different customers. They're both buying that Microsoft Surface 9. Uh, this customer's buying five, this customer's buying four. Uh, as you can see, the quantity available is negative nine because we have nothing in inventory and it's showing up on our back order report because then now down here you can see, okay, these Microsoft Surfaces, I've got negative nine quantity available. It's all going to be back on back order currently until those come in. So it's just a quick way to check for your customers to see uh, what's currently on back order. So that's a quick glimpse at our sales dashboard, both the setup and the functionality. Um, we've also got a few other dashboards that I've mentioned. All of this is available currently on Microsoft's app source for download free for 60 days for any of our dashboards. Uh, also have a few other products, uh, not dashboard related, but more productivity related. Um, so please check those out in Microsoft's app source for business central. We hope you really enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to anybody on our team and we'd be happy to help. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.